In this video, I'm going to show you the process of eliminating bad photos so you can get that one photo that is good. Hello, my name is Stuart Wood and welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time here, then click the subscribe button so you don't miss a video. In this video, I'm going to go over the images that I've taken over the past couple of weeks. Now, the past couple of weeks I've been off camping. I, uh, I didn't do any videos, I decided just to go for um, photography. So what I did is I took out the uh, the Tamron lens. If you remember we did the Tamron lens, so we had to get a solution to fix it because of its broken aperture. So I took out that out to test it. And the reason I'm doing this is because I've seen far too many videos on YouTube where they show you the perfect picture. And it can take hundreds of uh, hundreds of pictures to get that perfect one. So I just want to show you all of the bad images as well as the good images so that you don't get a false idea that you can snap a perfect macro image because it just doesn't happen that way. Okay, so let's have a look at this. So we're here in Lightroom and I've already marked um, a lot of these as, um, as pics so I can just press the X key to eliminate them from my um, pics. So at this point, um, here I wasn't using uh, my Twin Macro Flash. I don't think I used it for the two days of the weekend because I was using the natural light. So I had to get my exposure correct and I was practicing um, focusing, which wasn't turning out very good at all. So let's have a look at this one. We've got some sort of bug. A lot of noise in the image and a lot of chromatic distortion. That is the Tamron lens, I believe. Yes, it is. Okay, we got one here. Let's have a look at this one. And a lot of noise in the images. I don't like any of those. This again is the Tamron lens. Um, you can see the distortion. You can see that the fringing as well is very, very nasty. That you can't use. So I know how to fix the fringing with this lens. What we do is we get this lens and we just throw it away. I think worth it. So I already knew that looking on the back of the camera that that lens was not going to cope with the situation. So what I did is I switched over to my uh, 24 to 105 millimeter f4 L series lens and I put on my extension tubes and those images will be coming up soon. Uh, what I will do though is I will go through and show you what I took pictures of. So I've got this um, spider which I photographed its arse end. <laughs> you often find this that your focusing is so off that it just ruins the entire picture. Let me just get these, um, let's reject these. Don't want none of those. Now because I was chimping at the time, which is basically looking at the back of the camera, I know I got better photos than this. Because what I did is on the very first night, again, I was out with the Tamron lens. And you can see the fringing, um, you got camera blue on there, that's because I wasn't using a tripod. Um, you know I'm not that much of a fan of tripods and it just wasn't working right, let's have a look at this one completely missed the focusing again and this is what macro photography is like you'll take a hundred shots and every single one will be missed focus e exposure is wrong because you're again you're on tube so your camera gets a little bit confused um, camera shake <sighs> distortion Chromatic aberrations, purple fringing, that lens is out the window. And this is what happens, okay? Let's have a look at this one. Again, very noisy. What are we at? We are at uh, 1600 ISO. And that is with the Canon 650D. And it's just too noisy. I can't do nothing with that. It's too noisy. Even if I get a perfect exposure and everything, I mean, yeah, it'd look great on Facebook. But I'm not going to get a print out of that. You can see there, it's way too noisy. And unfortunately, I had to put the ISO up to there to be able to use that lens because it's an f5.6. So again, get through these. Now I found this bug. It was eating a moth. I'm not too sure what fly it is. 
Again, this is the Tamron lens, and you can see that from the uh, the purple fringe in. And I, I can't use any of that, I'm afraid. I've already, I have quickly gone through these on the back of the camera, so I know they are bad. So we're on to day two of the um, the first weekend, and at this point, I decided to ditch the Canon 650D and use the Canon 80D, which is currently filming. Now, there's a couple of reasons why I decided to do that. It's got better low light performance, so I can lower the uh, the ISO and we'll get better, cleaner images. And I also switched over to using the uh, the live view with the burst mode on the camera, which the A2D has a lot better live view and burst mode. So that's why I switched to that. So this is another setup shot. I'm just setting up my uh, my camera. And here we go, we have a fly. And you can see, look at the uh, the focusing, um, the, the, the noise and grain is a lot cleaner in this image. And that's partially because I am using, a, let's have a look what lens is it. This is the 50 millimeter, 1.8 on the 80D. A lot better than the Tamron lens. But still, I don't like that image. Okay, so we're starting to see um, damselflies here. Mr. Focus on this one again. We're just in front of his head. So we don't want that. So look at this one. Ooh, almost. Almost. What I'm going to do, I'm going to... Um, I'm just going to pick that as a, a, a four star. Okay. Get back to the develop. And I know I got better images than this. I know I've got better images than this. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly go through those. We've got like we've got over 600 pictures to get through. And this is me. I'm playing with my um, my exposures. Um, I do play with the f-stop quite a bit. This is currently at 2.8. I'm just missing the eyeballs. Just missing. I might see it's on a burst. It's bursting. Okay. So eventually you'll get one that's in focus. Again, we're just missing that. But now to say we don't we don't have purple fringing on this lens. Just so much better than the Tamron. If Tamron are watching and they want to send me one of their more expensive lenses for testing, I will surely test that out. But until that happens, I don't think I'll be touching the Tamron lens for macro. Not right now. Just the fact they keep failing on me, which is um, quite irritating. All right, let's get through these quickly. I already know I've got better images than that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to spin forward because I know I've got better images. I'm just going to go through these quickly and then I'll come back to you with the final ones that I like. Okay, so I've cut out everything but the damselfly, so it's the video is a little bit, a little bit less boring for you. Okay, and what we've got here is a game we're on the 80D, and we just missed the focusing on that one. My Lightroom's gone a little bit slow, but I don't like any of that. Okay, I'm going to switch back to the library. Uh, this one I don't like because, uh, if I just zoom out, we've got this big leaf here. We could fix it, but we did cut off his feet just here. So those ones I don't like. So we will reject those. This uh, series here. Um, and I'm not looking at the focusing, I'm just looking at the setup. The setup is pretty good, so if we could find one that's in focus, we could keep that. Now let me just check what lens this is with. Okay, this is with the uh, the EF twenty four to one hundred five lens, and surprisingly, that lens performed very well on extension tubes. I might be doing some more videos about that lens with extension tubes in the future. So I'm pressing my shutter button to activate the burst mode. Then I'm just gently moving backwards and forwards. Okay, and hopefully you get one that is in focus. That one's not. <laughs> okay. 
sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So we've got a couple that are close, but not quite on there. So I'm a stickler for quality, so I'm going to bin all of those. I don't like those. Uh, these ones, this set, let's have a look. Again, this is the uh, with the 105 L series lens. I mean, not that bad. That one's okay. So let's get rid of all the ones before that. Okay. So now what I'll do, I'll just click the arrow to see if there's any that are sharper. I hate this having to wait for Lightroom to load though. This loading, it's it's uh, very slow. Okay, so I don't think I'm going to beat that first one. So we'll get rid of all that. No, that's the one I want, thank you. Okay, so on this one, I decided to go into the, like a portrait mode. See if we can get a better shot of him. But I'm not that keen on it, so I'm going to remove those as well. There we go. Okay, so at this point I switched to the 21mm macro extension tube on my 105 L series lens. And we're getting a little bit of purple fringing. Because what I found is I was shooting against a white background. Now I tried going left, right, up, down, but I couldn't get rid of it. And what you're seeing is here is the sky, which is where you get the fringing, because it's a highly contrasted scene. And you're also getting the sky reflected in the lake behind him, and that I don't like. So, even though technically it's all in focus and framed nicely, I don't like those bunch of images. So, you can see here how I'm moving around trying to get rid of that sky, but it just wasn't happening. I'm going to get rid of those. We'll also reject that first one, even though it is a good image. Okay, so let's have a look at these. Now this one I will be rejecting because of this shadow here. Okay, so you see the shadow? And what's happening is the light's coming in from this side, it's hitting this branch and casting a shadow onto him. That we don't want. So I'm going to remove those. Let's have a look at this one. Yeah, that's basically the same setup, so I'm going to remove that one as well. So this one I moved a little bit to see if I could get um, get rid of the shadow, which yeah, kind of worked, but now we're losing his body, so we don't want that either. So we shall bin that one. Okay, let's have a look at this chap. See what we've got here. Um, let's wait for Lightroom to catch you up. Yeah. So technically, it's pretty good image, but I don't like it. I can't explain why, I just don't like it. So I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to go down to where we finished the burst mode and click or press the X button to reject it. Now this one now. Again, you know, it's 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 okay. But I just don't like the shot. So I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of all those. Go away. Let's have a look at this one. And this is literally the process I do when I'm going through my macro shots. Is I just look at it quickly. If I don't like it, I'll reject it. Nothing to cry over. I've got plenty of more images to choose from. Now this one, it's got camera shake, but the actual image itself is not that bad. If we can find one that's it. That's... Camera shake's good. Um, there's hardly any there, but his eyes aren't in focus. Now with these, you can focus stack them if you wish to. I'm not going to do that though. I don't have that much success when it comes to focus stacking. Well, one of them has got to be in focus on the eyes. Nope. Camera shake.
there. Got one there, right there. Okay, so if we select that one, we're going to mark him up as a three star. Move that rest of them. And then we'll just double check these others just in case there's one that's sharper. I seriously doubt it. No. Okay. So what's happening there is I've got my camera like this. I have my live view open, holding the camera, and I'll just press the uh, the, the shutter button and just move around like that. So eventually you'll get one in focus and you take as many pictures as it's needed. So we have one there that is okay and usable. I like it. I like it. So we'll keep that one. Okay, so now we'll come to this one. I don't like this one. I like the little shaft of light on its wing, but the rest of it is just... No, it's a little underexposed, but we can fix that, but I just don't like it. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. We chopped his tail off. Look at that. Same principle when it comes to portrait photography. Don't chop people's hands and feet off. I chopped his, uh, his bottom off, so we don't want to use that one. And I think, I do think I realised that, if I remember right. Yeah, so what I do is I, I reposition again here. So that we have his bum in shot now. Now here's a bunch that I like um, because he's sitting on this like flower that's not green. Unfortunately, we missed the focus on that one. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to skip forward to when I've picked the ones I like. You've seen the process. I look at the composition first. If I don't like it, I bin it. Doesn't matter how sharp it is. I'll just get rid of it. Then once I've got the composition ones that I like, I look at the sharpness, bin the ones that are out of focus, and keep the ones that are in focus. So I'm back, and these are the four picks I've picked out of the entire weekend's camping uh, that I like. And we have this one. I really like this image. I love the way it's uh, backlit. We might need to do something here. I'm not too sure what I will do there yet. And we have this one which is showcasing his face which is nice and we have this one which is your standard um damselfly yeah, standard damselfly shot and then we have this one here which i do like this one as well so out of those i am going to reject that one because that's your standard damselfly type shot and i will work on these three so those are my picks from the camping weekends uh, two weekends in all shot on the ATD with the um, the Canon 24 to 105 uh, L series lens is the f4 version with image stabilization so we'll edit these pictures in the next video but until then my name is Stuart Wood I want to thank you for watching this video hit subscribe if you haven't done already and I'll see you on the next video